Praise the Lord with me, somebody. Praise the good shepherd. Praise the Lamb of God without blemish. Praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are most welcome to this Our Holiness unto the Lord Revival Study. I'm Kenji Chodo. I'm the author of this Our Holiness Study text known as Understanding the Doctrines of Strategic Holiness Volume 1. The Doctrine of Strategic Component of Holiness. The book is available on Amazon and uh, in the description box of this video we have included the link to the Amazon website of the book. So please have a look at the description box of this video so that you will see the link to the Amazon website of the book. We are studying holiness and uh, the question is why should we do so? This is because holiness is the most important discipline to study in this life. It is the most important concept to study. Why? Because all other disciplines that we study will pass away, but holiness will not pass away. Holiness has to do with everlasting life. It has to do with eternity with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Holy Bible teaches that without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no Christian anywhere shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no believer anywhere shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no Bible professor shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no theologian shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no Bible scholar shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no pastor shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no evangelist shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no apostle shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no prophet shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no Bible teacher shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. It means that without holiness, no one shall make it to heaven. That is how important it is. And that is why we are studying holiness. It's the most important discipline to study here on earth, as I said a while ago. We have 150 lectures in this our study. And this is lecture one. Lecture one has to do with heaven and holiness terminology or terms. These are the terms that we are going to use during our 150 holiness unto the Lord revival study. So it is important for us to understand their meaning at the beginning. There are 65 of them that we are going to see. We have already seen the first five. We have seen the definition of purity two the definition of without spot three the definition of without blemish four the definition of without wrinkle five the definition of without fitness and now in a few minutes or seconds we are going to see the definition of love but before we do so, let's commit it to the Lord. So wherever you are, please stand up on your feet or fall down on your knees and begin to cry to the Lord. Love is the most misunderstood, is the most misunderstood, the, mis the most misunderstood concept in the world. And 
fake love is leading billions of souls to hell. It's leading, it, 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 leading humanity to hell. It's leading countless souls to hell. Fake love, counterfeit love, worldly love is leading billions of souls to hell. Even in the church, it's leading the whole church to hell because they don't understand what love is. So I want us to pray. Open your mouth and begin to cry to the Lord. Love, the Lord should give you biblical meaning of love. She gives you the biblical meaning of love so that you will apply it in your life and live a life of love according to the Bible and live a life of love as taught in the Holy Bible so that at the end you will make it to heaven. You will not live a life of counterfeit love in the world or fake love in the world or satanic love in the world that is leading countless souls to hell. It's leading billions of people to hell. You will not live such a love but you will live a life of love that is biblical and will make it to heaven at the end. Open your mouth and begin to cry to the Lord that the Lord should give you it, the true meaning, the biblical meaning of the word love in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you so love us, Lord, that you gave your only begotten Son. Oh, Lord, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, help us to understand this meaning, Lord, and help us to live a, such a love, Lord Jesus, a life of, a, of a love, oh, Lord, without any condition, a life of unconditional love, Lord, a life of heavenly love. Help us to understand the meaning of love as taught in your word and to apply it in our life on a daily basis. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, King of glory, I cover this presentation of the definition of love with the blood of Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We are preparing ourselves for heaven and we are doing so in love. Hallelujah. We are doing so in love. We are preparing ourselves for, the, for heaven. Hallelujah. And the way to do so is to understand holiness and to live such a life. And we are doing so in love. So what is the meaning of the word love? The Holy Bible defines love for us. Please, Open your Bibles with me to John 3, 16. Almost everybody knows that verse, but they misunderstand it. They can quote it. Many people can quote it, but they misunderstand what the verse is talking about. Open your Bibles with me to John 3, 16. I read. I'm reading from the authorized King James Version. I'm reading John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There are two important phrases that I would like us to underline in our Bibles. The first phrase is, God so loved the world. And the second phrase is, everlasting life. Why did God so love the world? Because he wants humanity to have everlasting life. In 2 Peter 3 9, the Bible teaches us that God doesn't want anybody to perish, but to come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell because He did not prepare hell for humanity. He prepared hell for Satan and his evil spirits. As clearly taught in Matthew. 2541. Hell is prepared for Satan and 
his evil spirit because they rebel against God. In Isaiah 14, 12 to 14, and Ezekiel 28, 12 to 18, Satan and his fallen angels, oh, his evil spirit, they rebel against God, and God prepared her as a punishment. God did not prepare her for humanity. He did not prepare her for man. He prepared it for Satan and his evil spirit. But unfortunately, hell is full of, of humanity. Hell is full of people. Why? Why? Because they have rebelled against God's love. They have rebelled against God's love. God so loved humanity. God so loved the world that he has given his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe, whosoever means anybody, anyone, whosoever believed in him, anyone, anywhere, in any age, in any generation, anyone, anywhere, in any age, in any generation, anyone that believed in him shall not perish. Here means that he he or she will not make it to he or she will not end up in hell. He or she will not go to hell. But shall have everlasting life, meaning that he or she shall make it to heaven. So what are we saying? We are saying that love has to do with everlasting life. Any love that is not in connection with everlasting life is counterfeit. It's fake and will lead those who, in, those who are involved in such a love to her. Any love that is not in line with everlasting life, that is not connected with everlasting life, is a counterfeit love. It is a fake love and will lead all those who are involved in such a love to her. So, if you love your spouse, do everything possible for your spouse to make it to heaven. God so loved the world that he did everything possible for the world to make it to heaven by sending his only begotten son to come and die for the sins of humanity so that the world will make it to heaven. So love is connected to heaven. Love has to do with everlasting life. Therefore, if you love your spouse, do everything possible for him or her to make it to heaven. If you love your father, do everything possible for your father to make it to heaven. If you love your mother, do everything possible for your mother to make it to heaven. If you love your child, do everything possible for your child to make it to heaven. If you love your children, do everything possible for your children to make it to heaven. If you love your siblings, do everything possible for them to make it to heaven. If you love your friends, do everything possible for them to make it to heaven. If you love your colleagues, do everything possible for your colleagues to make it to heaven. If you love your pastor, do everything possible for your pastor to make it to heaven. If you love your congregation, do everything possible for your congregation to make it to heaven. If you love your employer, do everything possible for your employer to make it to heaven. If you love your employees, do everything possible for your employees to make it to heaven. If you love any Bible scholar, do everything possible for him or her to make it to heaven. If you love any Bible Professor, do everything possible for him or her to make it to heaven. If you love any theologians, do everything possible for him or her to make it to heaven. If you love any evangelist, do everything possible for him or her to make it to heaven. If you love any prophet, do everything possible for him or her to make it to, to, to heaven. If you love any, any, any Bible teacher, do everything possible for him or her to to make it to heaven. If you love anyone, do everything possible for him or her to make it to heaven. Because love has to do with everlasting life. That's the meaning of love. Any love that doesn't have, any love that doesn't have anything to do with everlasting life, or any love that is not connected with everlasting life, is counterfeit love, is fake love, is love of the world, and we lead all those who are involved in such a love to, 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 to hell fire, to everlasting fire. So if somebody tells you I love you, what does the person mean? 
if somebody tells you I love you, the person must say that in with eternity in view. The person wants you to make it to everlasting uh, life in heaven. He wants you to make it to heaven. That's what love means. Love means that the person saying that I want you to make it to heaven. I want you to spend everlasting life with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the meaning of love according to John 3 16. Also see John, um, also see, uh, I beg your pardon, also see Jeremiah 31 3. Jeremiah 31 3. I read, I'm reading from Jeremiah 31 verse 3. The third verse of Jeremiah 31. I read, The Lord ha had appeared of all unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Did you hear that? The Lord appeared to Jeremiah and told him that he has loved him with an everlasting love. He has loved the children of, of Israel with an everlasting love. He has loved the church with an everlasting love. So God wants us to be with him forever and ever. He wants us to be with him in heaven forever and ever. He wants us to spend everlasting life with him. That is the meaning of love. That is why Christ came to save us from damnation. He came to save us from going to hell. God wants us to be with him forever and ever. That is the meaning of love. So if you say you love somebody, you must say that with eternity in mind. You must say that by being willing to do everything that is possible so that at the end of the day, that individual that you say you love will make it to heaven. If you say you love somebody and you don't intend to do anything for him or her to make it to heaven, then you are a counterfeit. You are a counterfeit. You represent, you are, you are representing Satan. You are working for Satan. You are a satanic agent. You are not saying you love somebody and the person is going to hell. You don't do anything. What love are you talking about? What do you mean by you love him or you love her and the person is going to hell, you are not doing anything for him or her to make it to heaven? If somebody says, I love you and the person is not doing anything possible for you to make it to heaven, that person is deceiving you. That, that, that person is an agent of Satan. That person is a satanic agent. Whether the person is a pastor, you know, an evangelist, uh, an, an, an apostle, a Bible teacher, a prophet, a theologian, a scholar, a believer, a Christian, whosoever he or she is. If somebody says, I love you, and the person is not doing anything possible for you to go to heaven, that person is representing Satan. That person is Satan's agent. He wants you to perish and go to hell. Therefore, it is very important for us to understand that love has to do with everlasting life. That the meaning of love is everlasting life. God wants you to spend everlasting life with, with him. That is why he sent Christ. He loved you and sent Christ to come and die for your sins so that you will repent and believe in Christ and spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. He so loved me that he sent Christ to come and die for my sins so that we will repent and believe in Christ and live a holy life and spend everlasting life with Christ in eternity. No, in heaven. Eternity in heaven. So that's the meaning of love. Having seen the meaning of love, let's look at what the Bible commands us to do. When the Bible commands us to love the Lord with all our heart, it commands us to love our neighbors as ourselves because we don't want our neighbors to perish. We don't want our neighbors to go to 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 go to hell. To love our enemies as a, also because we don't want our enemies to go to hell. To love those who persecute us because we don't want them to go to hell. We want them to repent and make it to heaven. To love everyone unconditionally. So let's see the first one. God wants us to love Him with all our heart. What do we mean to love God? We mean to keep his commandments. So look at Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, And Jesus said unto him, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Matthew 22, 37. What does it mean? It means that we have to keep the commandment of God. Because when we keep the commandment of God, we are keeping God's holy commandment. If we keep the commandment of God, we will live a holy life and we will make it to heaven. And the purpose for which Christ came here on earth will be fulfilled. Because he came here on earth so that we should believe in him and serve him in holiness and righteousness and make it to heaven at the end. So if we love God by keeping his commandments, then we will live a holy life and we will make it to heaven at the end. So John 14, 15 says that if you love me, keep my commandments. So loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind means keep the commandments of the Lord God Almighty. Keep the precepts of the Lord God Almighty by serving Him in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life here on earth. Hallelujah. That's what it means. So Matthew 22, 37 and John 14, 15 are saying that obey the commandments of, of God, God Almighty. Obey God's call unto holiness. Obey God's commands to be holy. And live such a life and make it to heaven at the end. So that the purpose for which Christ came will be fulfilled. So that will not be in vain. Hallelujah. Love your neighbor as yourself. We see that in Matthew 22, 39. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. The question is, who is your neighbor? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ answered that question in the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, 29 to 37. So who is your neighbor? Open your Bible to the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, 29 to 37. Luke, Luke 10, 29 to 37. Open your Bibles to the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, verses 29 to 37. Study that parable prayerfully and you will see that your neighbor is in the one that you know. In the one that you know, in the one that you come across, that is in, that is in trouble. In the one that you come across that is in trouble, in the one that you know that is in trouble, that you can help, then you, you help. That is your neighbor. Hallelujah. You do so unconditionally. You don't have anything attached to you. You do so unconditionally, willingly. And cheerfully, with all your heart. Hallelujah. The next one, loving your enemies. You know, in these last days, Satan is using so many preachers to deceive the world. You know, you see preachers will claim the pulpit. They will say, oh, kill your enemy, kill your enemy. Pray that God should kill your enemy. Because the Bible says, so far, a wish not to live. You know, Jesus has cancelled that. Jesus says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. So we are following the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, love your enemies. Let's have a look at Luke 6, verses 27 to to 36 Luke 6 verses 27 to to 28 and 30 to 36 I'll read Luke 6 verses 27 to 28 and then verses 30 to 36 I'll read verse 27 But I say unto you which here love your enemies that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saying Love your enemies, regardless of what they have done to you. Whether they are planning to kill you, love them. Whether they are planning to persecute you, love them. Stephen was stoned to death, yet he forgave them. Hallelujah. 
You forgive his enemies who stung him to death. So you have no excuse. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. That is our Lord and Jesus, uh, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ commanding us to one, love our enemies. Two, do good to them which hate which, which, which hate us. It is abundantly clear. Love your enemies. Whether they want to kill you, they cannot kill you if God is with you. They cannot kill you if God is with you. Unless God allows it. And if they do so, then you will go to heaven and be with the Lord forever and ever. So the Bible is very, very clear. Don't follow preachers on the internet who say, uh, pray for your enemies to die. Or who say, the Bible says, suffer a wish not to live. Pray for your enemies to die. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is teaching us. You know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. And the labor of grace that is upon our life means that we are called onto a higher moral standard than, than under the law. So under the grace, in other words, we have a higher moral standard than under the law. Therefore, we are called to a higher moral standard than under the law. Under the grace, that you must understand that under the grace, we have a higher moral standard that we are called onto than under the law. Under the law, you could kill your enemy. You were free to kill your enemy or you could suffer a wish not to live. But under the grace, you have to love your enemies. You have to do good to them, which hurt you. Verse 28. Bless them that curse you. Did you hear that? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the one teaching us. In Luke 6, 28. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Verse 30. Luke 6, verse 30. Give to every man that asks of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods. Ask him not again. Verse 31. And as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them. Likewise. So do unto others what you want them to do to you. So if you are praying that a wish should die, and they are also praying that you should die, will you be happy? Because let me tell you something. When you are praying that somebody should die, other people are also praying that you should, you should die. That's why maybe you have a lot of problems. Because as you are praying that somebody should die, another person is also praying that you should die. Or don't you know that you are an enemy? Or you are you are an enemy to so many people? You may be counting somebody as your enemy, or you may have so many enemies, but you are also an enemy to other people. So as you are praying that somebody should die, some, some people are also praying that you should die. If you say you have no enemy, you are an enemy to the kingdom of darkness. You are an enemy to Satan and you are enemies to all the fallen angels. You are all you are an enemy to all the evil spirit. Who, 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 the one you dead. So as you are praying that people should die, they are also praying that you should die. Or they are doing everything possible to kill you. So you have to understand that. That as you are calling some people a witches and wizards and you are praying that they should die, some people are also calling you a witch or, or a wizard. They are also praying that you should die. That is why you must understand the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says that in Luke 6, 27, that love your enemies, do good to them, which hate you. Bless them, Luke uh, 6, 28, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Luke 6, 31, we have read that, we have read that, okay, Luke 6, 32, for if you love them, which love you, what thanks have he? For sinners also love them that love that, that, that love them. So sinners do the same thing. Sinners also love those who love them. I read verse 32 again. For if you love them which love you, what thanks have, you, have he? For sinners also love those that love them. So what is the difference between you and a pagan? 
what is the difference between you and a sinner? Sinners love people who love them. If you say we love other people who love you, what is the difference between you and, and, and the pagan? You are, you are the same. You must be it, you must be different from, from pagans who love those who love them. You must love your enemies and do good to them who hurt you, do good to them who persecute you, pray for them. That is what distinguishes you between you. That's what distinguishes you from, from, from sinners. That's what makes you different from pagans or from sinners. Verse 33. I'm looking, I'm reading now Luke 6 33. I'm reading Luke 6 33. And if he do good to them, we do good to you. What thanks have he? For sinners also do even the same. You know, there's an English uh, uh, when, 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 uh, English and they will say that uh, one good thing deserves another. That's not biblical. The Bible says that if you do good to those who do good to you, what is the difference between you, between you and pagans? What is the difference between you and sinners? If you do good only to those who do good to you, what is the difference? There's no difference. Pagans also do good to those who do good to them. To them, one good turn deserves another. When the pagan does good to another pagan, the pagan will you know, also do good to him that has done good to him or her. So there is no difference between you. If you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself a believer, and you only do good to those who do good to you. There is no difference between you and pagans, or you and sinners. Verse 34, And if he lend to them of whom he have hoped to receive, what thanks have he? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. That is well understood. So as these people don't 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 expect you know, them to do likewise to you. If you lend to somebody and the person doesn't give you back, you no, know, don't go around crying as sinners do. Because sinners lend to people, they want people to pay them back. But somebody may become bank bankrupt and the person will not be able to pay you back. So forget about it. And do so willingly and cheerfully, and God Almighty will bless you. Verse 35. But love ye your enemies. This, this is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaching us. In Luke 6, 35. Love, but love ye your enemies, and do good, and learn, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. God is kind to everybody. He gives rains to everybody. He gives the sun to everybody. He gives the air we breathe to everybody. He's thankful. In fact, he's loved everybody. No, he is kind to the unthankful and to to the, to, to the evil. He is kind to everyone. Verse 36. Be he, be, be he therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. That was Luke 6, 27 to, to 28 and 30 to 36. Now let's look at... Uh, let's look at Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Is a similar scripture that we have seen in Luke 6, 27 to 36. Let's look at Matthew 5, 43 to 48. 43. Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. This, this, this was under the law. Under the law, you could hate your enemy. So, as I said a while ago, under grace, we are held to a higher moral standard than under the law. Under the law, you could hate your enemy. But now, you have to love your enemy. 44. But I say unto you, love your enemy. I'm reading Matthew 5, 44. Matthew 5, 44. But, love your, but, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So one, love your enemy unconditionally. 
love your enemies unconditionally. Don't say, okay, my enemies come to me and uh, ask for forgiveness and I will love them. No. Love them unconditionally. Two. Bless those who curse you unconditionally. Three. Do good to them that hurt you unconditionally. Four. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you unconditionally. So you must do, do all these things unconditionally, willingly, not with not, not with some grudges, willingly and cheerfully. And God Almighty will bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 45. That he may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to shine on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So God is kind to everybody. The sun shines on everybody, those who are good, those who are evil. The rain, you no, know, fall on everybody, those who are good, those who are evil. The atmosphere is good for everybody. You no, know, the air we breathe is for everybody, whether they are good or they are, they are evil. It's good for, it's for everybody. So God is kind to everybody. So be, be long wise. Do good to everybody. 46. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publican the same. We have seen that in Matthew, uh, I mean, in Luke 6. We have seen that in Luke 6, uh, 27 to 36 that we saw a while ago. 47. And if he salute your, your brethren only, what do ye, what do ye more than others? Do not even the public counsel. 48. Be he therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So, it cannot be clearer. Love your enemies, which means do everything possible for them to make it to heaven. Love them. Present the gospel to them. Pray for them to know the truth. And to believe the gospel and to save the Lord in righteousness and holiness and make it to heaven. Do the same to those who hurt you. Do the same to those who persecute you. Do the same to those who despitefully use you. Do the same to everybody. Love them unconditionally. Love their soul. Don't stand by and watch them go to hell. Pray for them. Fast and pray for them to know the truth and to and to believe the gospel. Serve the Lord in holiness and righteousness and make it to heaven at the end. Love them unconditionally. Loving those who persecute you because of the gospel. Some people may persecute you because of the gospel. Because you are preaching the gospel, they will persecute you. Look at Matthew 5 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them. That hurt you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And the feed one, love loving everyone unconditionally. Matthew 22 39. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. Love everyone unconditionally. Love everyone unconditionally. Conclusion John 14 15. That's a conclusion. John 14 15. If you love me, keep my commandment. That is our Lord and Jesus Christ speaking. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is amongst us. If you love him, if you say you are a Christian, if you say you are a follower of Christ, if you say you are a believer in Christ, then keep his commandments. Hallelujah. Love him. If you love him, keep his commandments. If you love him, keep his commandments. John 14, 15. It's time for us to pray now. Open your mouth. Wherever you are, stand on your feet. Fall down on your knees and begin to cry to the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray that you will not love the way the world loves. The, the world is deceptive, very, very deceptive. 
in the world, the law.